As a newspaper photographer, I used to get some pretty dull assignments, which I knew would never see light of day in print. So I used to process my films and then ask the printer to make me some round prints. Why? So they'd fit in the bin without folding. The Mikey 6.5mm f2 gives me a better reason for making round prints. The last fish I used was the Olympus Lenscap f8 one. It was lots of fun, but if I'm shooting a conventional rectangular image, I really prefer something like a 7mm super wide without distortion. Super wides alter perspective just as long telephotos do, and form some of the most expressive tools a photographer has at his or her disposal. A rectangular fisheye image looks gimmicky to me and suits few situations, which is why I was pleased to find this Mikey 6.5mm fisheye yields what I hoped it would, a circular image. If I'm going to have a distorted picture, I want it radically distorted. It then becomes a fresh eye on everyday things. Note that the image is clipped slightly top and bottom. That's because the lens was originally for APS-C cameras. Nikon made the first practical production fisheye lens in the early 70s, the f 28 8mm. It cost about £2,500 at today's prices. Now here's one from Mikey, f2 and 6.5mm, and just £125. For the price, you might expect a plasticky gimmick, but it's anything but. Like Mikey's 50mm f2 that I tried a while ago, it is solidly metal and feels like a 60s or 70s Nikon lens. No fancy contacts on the rear, of course, so for auto exposure, you need to use aperture priority. Or better, since with such a field of view, there's more a best exposure than a correct one, use manual exposure so you can see what you are getting. To do that, on Olympus turn Live View Boost off, and on Panasonic turn Constant Preview on. The apertures are marked at f2, 4, 8 and 22, and closest focus is at a few inches from the front glass. Focusing and aperture rings are smooth and belie the low price. Like the 50mm, it may be cheap, but it doesn't feel it. In use, the only problem with the lens is being what it is. It boasts a 190 degree angle of view. In the shot here, I have it on my M1 Mark II. I am holding the grip perfectly normally, and there on the right are my fingers, on the grip just behind the lens and in shot. The extreme perspective can give some funny effects. Because the perspective is so violent, the background here shifts very slightly compared to the lamp, giving an almost animated effect. It's things like that that make lenses interesting. As I said before, an interesting slant on an everyday object. It can even work on a selfie. The optical performance is much better than I expected. Here's a shot and a 100% pull up at f2. It's as sharp as a normal lens in the centre. That matters because when looking at a photograph, the eye needs something sharp as a reference point to make a picture look right. Edge sharpness is a tricky matter. If I focus on a stone a metre away, the centre point may be at a metre, but the edges, at more than 180 degrees to the wall, could be a mile away behind me. Could I then expect them to be sharp? It sounded more like a matter of philosophy than lens design, so I asked Bertrand Russell. He said that the observer, when he seems to himself to be observing a stone, is really, if physics is to be believed, observing the effects of the stone upon himself. I don't think he understood the question, really. What's also handy is that the optical performance holds up OK when stopped down, so shots like this at f22 are perfectly usable, even though they are much closer than the optical close focus. Generally, set the mic heater between 1 metre and infinity, and stop down to f8 or even 5.6, and you don't need to focus. If you do want to focus, you'll need magnified view to do it with any certainty, because it has so much depth of field. Focus peaking doesn't work, because the great depth means every edge in the picture from three feet to infinity has coloured edges. Would I buy one of these? Yes, I would, and I have. A cheapo gimmick fisheye lens doesn't interest me to own, because if I'm going to take pictures at all, I want them to professional standards. On the other hand, I wouldn't use a fisheye anywhere near enough to justify spending £500 and up. I've managed for my lifetime without a fisheye lens, and I don't feel I need one now. But this one hits a neat spot, well made, sharp and at a price that doesn't make me feel self-indulgent. Much like my old 300mm Nikkor with adapter. I wouldn't buy a 300mm Olympus Pro lens because I'd hardly ever use it. But the Nikon at £140 
I've got a good 300 for those rare occasions. Ditto the Mikey. The slight clipping top and bottom looks quite natural and doesn't bother me. Obviously I'd prefer the full circle, but it's a small price to pay for such a potentially creative addition to the Micro Four Thirds optical armoury. I'll leave you with a rather dull picture of a shopping mall. Well, it would be dull, but through the mic it looks quite exotic. That's what it's for. Thanks for watching.